So first thing I'm going to do is wipe this down with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. And this will help to make sure that all the glass is clear um, of any dust and maybe some factory residue or anything um, that is settled on it that would get in the way. Uh, the next step, which is the application of the foam. One advantage of the 91 or 90 percent isopropyl alcohol is that it evaporates really quickly um, it doesn't leave any residue as well so really useful for cleaning um, glass when you need it to dry quickly um, also um, things like electronics you want to make sure to be real thorough The next step, we'll apply a base layer of uh, pond foam. Um, this is animal safe, um, pretty much waterproof, water resistant at least, uh, black. In this case, the brand is Pond Max, um, and um, the product is Black Waterfall Foam. This is um, chemically identical almost to a um, great stuff uh, pond and stone which is what I usually use um, I just got a good deal on this stuff here but this this product is specifically made for use around um, moist and wet conditions uh, also, um, things that are hard to stick to in certain cases, like uh, brick and stone, uh, ceramic, I'm assuming glass as well. Now I'm going to begin applying the first, uh, basically, base layer of the black foam. Another detail to mention about the black foam is uh, one, it's safer uh, for the animals than like classical yellow style expanding insulation foam. Um, it's specifically made for this kind of application um, and it will say so on the bottle that it's aquatic and pet safe and once cured. Um, also, I think it just looks a lot better. Unfortunately, uh, some background kits that you can buy on like joshesfrogs.com and everything, they come with the yellow foam, which uh, one, isn't preferable for this kind of application that they sell it for, and two, again, it's the yellow foam, so just on the basis of the color, it's not going to look as good, it's not going to blend in nearly as well. So here we go. That ran out quick. reason why I'm building up these two sides is because I'm going to make uh, ledges, essentially. Okay, 
now I'm going to start putting some pieces of cork bark in. Just going to play around and see where I want them to go. I'm using some masking tape to help hold the piece of cork in place. All right, so this is what I've got done so far. Um, let me rearrange. Okay, so you can see the foam has expanded quite a lot. So keep in mind if you ever use it, you don't really need to use that much to get like three to four times the expansion. And now I'm going to shave down some of the edges of these cork rounds. All right, I added another cork round down here. I had to dig out the foam a little bit. Um, I'll give you guys a closer shot of everything soon. I know the angle's not that great. Sorry about that. Now I'm going to lay a little bit more foam to support some of the structures I added. All right, I'll give you guys another look at what I've done so far. Um, I added that piece of rosewood, um, that additional cork round there. I added some foam to support it all, and then I shaved down most of the foam. Uh, you can see all the debris there and there at the base of the tank. Um, it's probably a few cubic feet you end up having to shave down a lot of the foam and so I dug out the uh, the rounded tops and everything and the center here if you can kind of see going down there to give it a lot more three-dimensionality um, and in the next step when we add moss and coconut fiber to the surface and everything um, it'll give it a lot of contouring, which is nice. Okay, now I'm going to make some hides out of coconut. Uh, first, I'm going to drill holes in the top to just drain out the fluid. Or drill a hole. This will help the... Uh, the hole cutting process later with the circular or the hole saw bit uh, to be less messy. Coconuts are tough. And now I've let a lot of the fluid drain out of the coconuts. Still not all of it, um, as you can see. So this part's messy. Um, 
thumb to note real quick. Notice I drilled the holes around the, the three soft spots of the, um, I guess, top of the coconut or base. Anyways, uh, those are those are softer, easier to drill through. The uh, main bit of the husk and shell is really difficult. Uh, anyways, so you'll want to use uh, those three holes at the top as your top for the hide in case you want to str uh, bring string through it to hang it up or anything. Just keep that in mind. So we'll pick our spot. I'm going to put hole right here with the hole saw bit of the drill this is this is the biggest size I've got um, it is at uh, two and a half inches or uh, 64 millimeters right, two more to go Oh wow, that's messy. Yeah, please be very careful when you're doing this. out the hole a little bit and right, so now we've got the four holes drilled and the next step is to uh, scrape out all the flesh inside basically um, the white uh, fruit bit of the coconut you can use a uh, either um, like a blunt knife or preferably like a spoon or a fork to do this. Alright, so a little more than an hour later I got them all carved out. The fourth one uh, broke it had a real thin shell so left with three which is fine. Um, I got one extra for that reason. Um, but you can see I scraped them all out. Um, it's useful to use like a like a strong butter knife and a sharp spoon um, like possibly like a I forget what they call them they're they're sharp spoons meant for scraping but one of those of course uh, you'll something to look at is you'll notice that may find a good piece The inside of the coconut, um, the outside, the outermost part of the, f the white flesh, um, that has part, or the first layer of the actual husk, the shell bit of it, and you actually have to peel that part out as well. It makes it easier than just scraping the meat.